Hey everyone, just quick announcement before I share today's episode with Vitaly Buford. Vitaly is doing some really positive work and I'm excited for her to get to share her story. But just want to take a minute to share the release of my first children's book of my Healthy Children's Book series called Maddox's Trip to the Chiropractor. It's a cute book with bright pictures that follows a toddler on her trip to the chiropractor. It shows her excitement and how she knows that it impacts her health in a positive way. And each purchase of the book will be supporting a project that I started called the Unlock Wellness Project. For each purchase of the book, we will be donating a wellness bag to a child in need. These wellness bags will include non-toxic, chemical-free essentials such as soap, shampoo, toothpaste, a toothbrush, items that a lot of the times children in tough situations don't have access to. You can learn more about the book and about the Unlock Wellness Project by going to drkcjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y johnson.com. Click on the shop tab, then click the children's book option. You'll be able to read a short description and even watch a short video with more information. You can also purchase the book directly on amazon.com by searching Maddox's Trip to the Chiropractor. But I hope you guys love the book. Be sure to check out my website to learn more. And thank you so much for the support. Now it's time for today's episode. I hope you love my conversation with Vitaly Buford. Welcome to the Unlock Wellness Podcast. I'm Dr. Casey and excited for today's guest. I'm here with Vitaly Buford and big shout out to Bill Psycholic for connecting me with Vitaly. Uh, Bill was a past guest on the podcast in episode 34. So be sure to check out our conversation. His story is awesome as well. But Vitaly has completely transformed her health and her life and I'm just excited for her to get to share her story on here for you guys. So Vitaly, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I'm excited to have you. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Casey. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess let's just, you know, jump into your backstory. I mean, just take us back a little bit and just kind of tell us what your health and life kind of looks like a little bit earlier and then how it's kind of evolved to where it is right now. Yeah. So, um, I am currently three and a half years sober. I struggled with a 10 year addiction to Adderall, which is a prescription stimulant. And I started taking it when I was 21 years old and got sober when I was 31 years old. And um, the reason that I was on that drug is because I thought that I needed to be perfect to be loved. So my idea of perfection was thin and really high achieving at work. And Adderall, I thought, allowed me to be both of those things which again, in turn, I thought I needed to be, to be loved. And so in my now three and a half years of sobriety, um, I'm able to live um, this whole life that is, that is beautiful. And um, I realized that I don't need to be thin, high performing or perfect to be loved. So it's just this really, this really great space to be in. Yeah. So I, I know with like, you know, Adderall, when I, whenever people think of, Adderall. Sometimes it's not thought of of something that's that serious, and um, and I'm glad that that's a topic that we kind of get to jump into because we I haven't yet on the podcast. But like you know, it's so common. I mean, you go to any college campus or now like oh yeah, like it's so readily available. Like I mean, you could get it at the school clinic in like two seconds. I I mean, it, it really is crazy how readily available it is and how like looked at as just a, not a big deal. Yes, I would agree. And, um, I remember trying it for the first time, like my junior year of college and definitely using it as a study drug. Mm-hmm. And I remember getting straight A's, um, losing weight, um, and, and then turning back to it when I was a senior in college. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. And I mean, as a college student, both of those things seem pretty appealing, right? To lose weight. And yeah. Have like yeah. <laughs> I mean I mean really like if you're if that's like kind of the advertisement for it in college I mean you know that sounds pretty perfect right so um yeah so that's why you kind of started taking it did you like notice any negative effects from it right away or did you just like you were just seeing the positives and just kept you know just going with it I think seeing the positives but 
over time, it was all consuming and I was a slave to the drug. So you can only imagine what my tolerance was over 10 years. Um, and so basically that's all I thought about was, do I have enough of the drug? Can I get more of it? (laughs) You know, if I didn't have it, like, how could I get it? Um, but I think Adderall is something that because it's a prescription drug, people think is okay, um, to take. And for me, it just triggered obviously a 10 year addiction. Right. Yeah. Cause I mean, what people, a lot of people don't realize with Adderall is the chemical composition of it is almost exactly the same as cocaine. Correct. So the effects that it has on your body and like, obviously your, your brain and like the neurons in your body, like it's pretty much identical. Like it's crazy to sim- like how similar it is as a chemical compound. Um, so it affects you the same way. So obviously it's, you know, when you have young kids taking this and obviously like, you know, let's think of like, you know, obviously like if a doctor tells a parent, oh, your kid has ADHD, like give them Adderall, you know, as a parent, if some, a doctor is telling you that, like you trust it. But what if that doctor was standing there with like cocaine was like, Hey, give your kid cocaine. Like you're going to be like, you're insane, but it's, but it's basically the same thing with a prescription pad. I mean, it's, it's with, yeah. a, with a different label, basically. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. insane. Yeah, it is. And I think for me, you know, the biggest part is the reason that I took it, right? The reason I took it was because I thought I needed to be perfect. And I think a lot of people um, use it for that reason, like moms who think they need to have, you know, the perfect life or kids who think they need to have the perfect grades. Um, you know, it's this idea that society thinks we need to be perfect to be right. whole. Right. Like, when do you think that that wanting to be perfect kind of started for you? Because I'm thinking, how, how did you say you, that you are? I'm 35 now. Okay. So like, you know, when you're, you know, when you're in high school and college, like social media is not as big then. So, I mean, more TV, more family and friend pressure, like what was kind of like that trigger like for you? Yeah, I think um, for me, it was um, the thing, the idea that you need all these external things to be happy and whole. So, you know, good grades, you know, involved in high school activities and college activities. And then body image was something for me. And to be quite honest, um, when the what triggered me going on Adderall when I was on 20, when I was 21 was my mother called me fat. That's definitely something. I mean, obviously, you don't want to hear that at all. And then from a family member, it kind of amplifies that. Yeah. And everyone wants to be loved and accepted by their parents. Right. And like, so whenever you started taking it, like, okay, so, it, you know, it's obviously when did you have like an exact moment where you realized like, I'm a little bit too dependent on this, like I need to start making changes to get my like health together because it, this, you know, this isn't a sustainable path for me. So I'm not sure, I guess I can, t- the, the aha moment that I had, um, you know, I knew that it was that I had a problem during the 10 years. I mean, it was, I never, <laughs> I mean, I was in denial, but I definitely knew that it wasn't normal, you know, that, you know, there, and there wasn't an unlimited supply of these drugs. I couldn't do it for the rest of my life. But, um, I was working at my job and, um, this life coach really changed my life. And he said this phrase to me, he said, I see in you what I refuse to see in me and didn't really understand it at the time. Um, he had seen me interacting with my staff and said, Vitaly, I think you're, you're really critical of the people who work for you. He's like, do you think you're critical of them? And I was like, um, you don't know me. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, the reason that you're critical of them is because you're critical of yourself. And then he said that phrase to me, I see in you what I refuse to see in me. And so, you know, I sat with that for a while. And then the next week, my mother came to visit me and she had relapsed at my house. And I was really, really angry with her. And I looked at her and I was just so angry. And then I took a step back and I thought about that phrase that that life coach had told me. And it was really this powerful moment for me. And I thought about it and it was, I see in you what I refuse to see in me. 
And what I was refusing to see in me was that, well, I was accusing of her of needing to get sober, but I myself wasn't getting sober. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's, it, it's crazy powerful, you know, when it, when that hits home and that's, um, I mean, you're right. List that it's a pretty strong phrase for sure. Like was, uh, was your mom, was it alcohol? That, that yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And, um, yeah, no, that's crazy. So where did that kind of lead from there? And so in that exact moment, I was like, you know, I need to start, stop pointing fingers and I need to point the finger at myself and I need to get help. And so I prayed and literally a week later, I drove myself to rehab. That's something else like, you know, with, especially with something like Adderall, you don't think of, uh, like, like, that's not the first thing you think of, right? You don't think of addiction, but like, you, oh, also, I know. Don't think of, <laughs> but you also don't think of like um, withdrawal symptoms. I mean, yeah. was it, how, I mean, how was that process for you there? Um, I was really tired. I was really hungry and I was really depressed. Yeah. So just like a big downfall. Yeah. So I think depression was probably the the hardest part of it, but I also took a lot of it. And so I remember going to rehab and people being like, so why are you here? And I was like, Adderall. And they laughed at me and I was like, no, this is actually, then I told them how much I took each day. And they were like, whoa, you're lucky to be alive that your heart didn't stop. Right. Cause that's a big thing with like, I mean, the same thing we were just talking about, you know, with Adderall and the same be basically being the same as cocaine, like the effects that it has on your heart and the risk that you have from just, I mean, just like your heart, just stopping, just sudden cardiac arrest is, mm-hmm. I mean, the dangers are real. And like, um, yeah, I mean, taking it in high dosages, obviously is going to increase that for sure. And like, and obviously something else, uh, Vitaly is like, people don't know like how this is going to affect people long-term, you know, for the people that never quit taking it, you know, like, no, there's no long-term study on Adderall just because it's not that old. You know what I mean? I know, which is scary. Yeah, it is scary. It is scary. So, so what it's, you know, you're, you're in rehab, like what are some of the, I know you talked about, you know, your super fatigue and like the depression's really kicking in. Like how, like just how was that whole process for you? Like how did you have like a turning point in, while you were in rehab that really like helped you kind of get over that, you know, that hump of depression there or like, how did that, you know, how did that all play out there? Well, I was in like rehab, like inpatient rehab for two weeks. And then I did outpatient rehab and went back to my full-time job, um, did outpatient rehab for, I think three months, I think four nights a week. Um, and so that really helped me with my transition back into real life, if you will. Um, you know, the withdrawal symptoms, um, weren't as bad, I think, as, as other drugs. Um, but for me, it was, well, learning to live life drug-free mm-hmm. and really dealing with feelings and um, just issues that I've been suppressing for 10 years. Right. Yeah. So it's more like a mental, like mind game. They, Correct. Uh, <laughs> right. Just getting a, a and learn, more healthier mindset. Yeah. Yeah. And learning to love myself mm-hmm. just as I am. Right. Cause I mean, once you find that place of like self-love, then you want to take care of your body and you want to be better for your, yourself and for your family and your kids or whoever at work, you know, all of those things. So it's just like finding that. And when you're suppressing it with other, you know, outside things and taking those in, like you can't properly do that. So you kind of had to like, you know, start to actually deal with the feelings, with everything that you had, had gone through. Yes, exactly. So where did it kind of go from there then once you um, you start to realize like you have to do this, like did you start to prioritize your health more or like, you know, what really helped that whole process along? Yeah, well, <laughs> um, it was interesting. So I, I, I got rid of the Adderall and um, which I used to control my weight and, you know, my work performance. And then it was interesting. I, I developed an eating disorder right after I got sober because obviously you get rid of one thing, but you have to deal with the deeper issues. And I wasn't dealing with the deeper issues. So then I started using food and exercise to control things. And so it's like this addiction whack-a-mole, right? right. <laughs> oh, Adderall's gone. Oh, now you have an eating disorder. Um, and so 
really when I finally dealt with the eating disorder and, you know, learned to live my life and not have, you know, food and exercise or drugs be the control of my life, just living my life and loving myself was really, was really kind of, and that, that took, um, the eating disorder probably was for a year and a half after I got sober. Right. Cause I mean, in, you know, it's the same thing with like, as far as like a food or like exercise addiction, not necessarily, uh, well, you know, not necessarily a, a bad thing, but when it's done in for not the right reasons and it's just like excessive, like, mm-hmm. I mean, the dangers that it's had, like, I mean, it, it really is like, it's, it's not a good thing. So, you know, those things should be done, like we were saying before, because, you know, you're trying to care for yourself and not because you're trying to Punish. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, like, so you said that lasted like, you said like a year and a half. Yeah. And so I've been, you know, eating disorder free for a year and a half, two years. Um, and that's not to say that I still don't have food issues. I'm definitely not perfect, but I've made a lot of progress in terms of body image. Yeah. No, that, that's awesome. And how do you think, like, I mean, how has that impacted? like all of that, just realizing like kind of what the deeper root issues are, like, you know, just developing that stronger mindset that you don't need, like the outside things coming in to really have like happiness. Like how has that affected just, I mean, just overall like happiness and like your workplace and with your family, we were talking before, like you have a six year old, like how, like how has that affected? I mean, just really just everything in general. Yeah. Um, well, my six-year-old is actually my nephew. So I'm raising my six-year-old nephew and I've had him for a year and a half and I wouldn't be able to do that if I weren't sober. Um, but I would just say that the level of self-awareness and self-love I have um, is just something so beautiful that I want other people to have. And I would not be where I am today mentally um, if I wasn't sober. And um you know, I had to get aware. I had to get really uncomfortable (laughs) and then I had to get going. Um, and, um, and now I'm, I'm, I've turned into a personal development coach so I can help coach other people through, you know, perfection control issues. Um, but as you know, just self-awareness is an ongoing journey. It's like an onion Mm -hmm. peeling all the different layers. (laughs) Right. Right. No, I mean, the self-awareness is, I mean, Basically, you know, the, the core of it, it's, um, I, I mean, it, it, you, you kind of nailed it a second ago, just like, I mean, just being willing to be out of your comfort zone, because mm-hmm. it's just like, anything good is not going to be comfortable, you know, it's not, <laughs> it's not comfortable to like, have to deal with like, you know, feelings that maybe aren't, yeah. that, you know, that you're not used to feeling like you never you were having to deal with that, like, it wasn't comfortable to have to like, somehow find an excessive amount of energy doing it the right way whatever it was just like you know yeah. a pill pill away basically right yeah so it's um yeah yeah I think you know it's going to rehab was uncomfortable you know um breaking through an eating disorder was uncomfortable but I had to grow and I had to do those things to grow into a better better person and a person that loved myself I did not love myself prior right. to that Right. And like, how are you like, I know you said that you're, you're, you know, you're trying to help others that had to deal with, with similar issues. Like, um, like, I mean, like, have you reached out to like places like colleges? Because I feel like it, I mean, you're going to see a lot of those same issues. I mean, just really on any college campus, you know, it's just that kind of atmosphere. Um, and then that, you know, that age range where you're going to be seeing most of that. Yes. Um, that's actually on my target list. So I'm glad that you brought that up. I'm really new, um, in the, the personal development world, but yes, it's, I, I want to definitely hit college campuses. Yeah. No, cause I think that's important because I mean, you know, you, you see a lot of people that will go out and speak and, and do all of these things, but whatever somebody has had to deal with it firsthand, just the experience and like the advice you can give, you know, can really help people. So it's not like, you know, you're not just reading a book and then going out and talking about it. It's like, you yeah. actually had to deal with it. So, um, it makes it more, makes it more personal, makes it more like real to that person that you're trying to help. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So, you know, Vitaly, I know you were saying that 
that that's kind of on your to-do list coming up, but like, do you have anything else happening in the future that, uh, yeah, you just want to like just share with people just things that you're working on? Yeah. So, um, I am a certified, um, personal development coach and I am starting my business and I currently do one-on-one coaching. Um, but my, my focus is really helping people love the person they see in the mirror inside and out because for so long in my life, I didn't love the person I saw in the mirror and I thought I had to be perfect. And so I used all these external things, um, to try to love myself. Um, and it wasn't until I removed those things and worked on, you know, some, (laughs) some self-awareness, um, tools that I really started to fully embrace and love the person that I saw in the mirror. So that's really my focus right now and, and, and currently doing a lot of one-on-one coaching. No, that's awesome. That's awesome. And like, you know, what is, what is the best way for people to really like follow you on social media? That way they can keep up with this thing you're working on and just, um, yeah, just reach and be able to reach out to you as well. Yeah. My, um, Instagram page is just Vitali Buford and you can also find me on Facebook. And then my email is Vitali at gmail.com. And Vitaly is spelled V-I-T-A-L-E. Perfect. Yeah, all of those, Vitaly, I'm going to put in the uh, in the show notes. That way people can just click and okay. check out everything that you are working on. But uh, but yeah, no, Vitaly, just closing question that I ask every guest. But if you just had one piece of advice for the audience, maybe it's something that was that has been you know, your biggest takeaway through this whole journey and this whole process. But if you just had one piece of advice to give, what would it be? My one piece of advice is something to do tomorrow. And I would pick one thing, one thing that's really uncomfortable and do that one thing and then see how much you grow from it. And it could be something big, like deciding to go to rehab, or it can be something like having a difficult conversation with a parent or a spouse, but do something that you've, you've, um, that you've been afraid to do that you're, 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 um, you haven't, you've been afraid to get uncomfortable with because growth is, um, is right there outside your comfort zone. Awesome. No, that's perfect. I love it. And uh, Vitaly, thank you so much for taking time to come on. I loved having you and I'm excited to see just how many lives you'd be able to impact just by, just by sharing your story. Well, thank you, Dr. Casey. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's episode. I hope you loved my conversation with Vitaly. She's doing such positive work, and I'm excited for you guys to follow her on social media to keep up with everything that she's doing. You can find the social media links that we talked about in the episode in the show notes, but you can also find them on my website as well at drcaseyjohnson.com. That's D-R-K-A-S-E-Y johnson.com. Click on the Listen tab. Then from there, you'll be able to see all of the past guests that have come on the Unlock Wellness podcast, read a little bit about each guest, and be able to click on their social media links, websites, all of that. So all of Vitaly's information can be found on my site as well. If you guys loved today's episode with Vitaly, be sure to jump onto iTunes, subscribe, and write a review. It really helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate all of the feedback and support. And like I spoke about in the intro, Also, be sure to check out my first children's book of my Healthy Children's Book series called Maddox's Trip to the Chiropractor. Each purchase of the book supports the Unlock Wellness Project, which applies a wellness bag to a child in need for each book purchased. You can learn more about the book and the Unlock Wellness Project on my website as well at drcaseyjohnson.com. Click on the Shop tab, then choose the Children's Book option. You'll be able to read a short description and even watch a short video to learn more. If you do purchase the book, be sure to share it on social media using the hashtag UWProject. I'll repost it and give you a shout out on the podcast. But I hope you guys love the book. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you love today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. 